There's a lot that we can do to help cats that are appearing outside the litter tray, that are peeing everywhere, but it does take a little bit of work. Remember, it's a problem for your cat. They're, they're doing this and they're not doing it out of spite. They're doing it because they're feeling stressed or they've got a medical condition. It's one of the most frustrating and disgusting problem behaviours that your cat can face. So how can you stop them spraying, especially if you've already tried absolutely everything? Welcome to Call the Vet, the show that answers all your dog and cat questions so they can live healthier, happier lives. And here's your host, veterinarian Dr. Alex Avery. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode number 52 of the Call the Vet podcast. If we've not met before, I'm Dr. Alex, and I'm the veterinarian behind OurPetsHealth.com, where my aim is to help you and your pet live a healthier, happier life. And this one is very much about you living a happier life as well as your cat, because this can be such a frustrating problem to experience and to have to deal with and to try and come up with a solution. But before we get into today's question, I just want to make sure you're subscribed if you're not already so that you don't miss out on all of the future questions. You can also get your question answered simply by heading over to callthevet.org. And then just before I jump into my answer, I wanted to let you know as well about the Our Pets Health Academy. So this is the one community online to join to optimise your pet's health and happiness through a mixture of courses, downloadable resources, which are really action orientated exclusive live training and q and a sessions with me and also a member only forum for all the support and help you could possibly want the our pets health academy is about to be launched over the next few weeks so head over to ourpetshealthacademy.com to sign up for the waiting list and then you'll get access to a never to be repeated opening offer that you really will kick yourself if you miss out on so if you really are interested in optimizing your pet's health Head over to ourpetshealthacademy.com and I really hope to see you over there. And today's question is one I can definitely sympathise with. And as I read it through, you'll hear the frustration um, in kind of in Jean's tone. You know, she's tried absolutely everything. So this is the question. I've tried everything and my 12-year-old male cat Leo will not stop peeing outside the litter box. After reading and consulting, I've concluded that this is a territorial expression and I get the psychology of it for him, an ageing and more feeble male cat, but it's a big problem for his human family members. I've tried measures for the last year and a half, quick clean up, enzyme cleaners and knockouts. I've gone through gallons. I've pulled up flooring, fell away in multiple rooms, changing food, changing litter, and he is in a, on a good vet recommended version of both. Cat attract in the litter box as well. Right now he seems to have have uh, one safe room where he can be without soiling, which is um, my guest room. However, my mum needs to visit more often, so this is not a solution. I'm really distressed. And as I think you can appreciate, this affects everyone in a household. Two vets have seen him. He has arthritis and stumbles, but they've not been able to diagnose anything else. I know he is uncomfortable due to his arthritis, and I do wonder what else is ailing him, but has not been diagnosed. It may just be that he feels his age more than others. In any event, I tried painkillers and anti-inflammatory. No real difference. Tried anti-anxiety meds. Didn't help. Is there anything else I should be considering? So Jeanan has, you know, she's done a fantastic job. She's really tried to work through the problem. She's put in a lot of effort. But Leo is still peeing outside the litter box, peeing all over the house, um, you know, and it's obviously causing a lot of tension between kind of within the family, within the family members, but also it's going to affect the the relationship that Leo has with the rest of the family as well. So let's jump into this big topic. Now, obviously, it's difficult for me to suggest much more, really, as it sounds like Jeanan's actually tried pretty much everything. But one thing that I always find really helpful with cases of any description, so that could be problem peeing, but it could be any other medical condition. One thing I find helpful with cases that aren't going to plan or going as well as I would hope or expect is just to go back to the basics, go back to the very beginning and check that nothing has been skipped over or overlooked because it was originally felt to be 
less likely. Um, it's also worth you know being aware of the fact that if we're taking blood tests, for example, or urine samples in, in um, Leo's case, in the very early stages of a problem, it might be that actually the changes, we, we were a little bit early and we didn't get the changes we might have seen had we left things a little bit later. So that's where actually repeating tests, I know that is a really frustrating thing to hear. And I know these tests can cost, you know, quite a lot of money in some cases, but sometimes we do need to repeat things just to check that what we found in the first instance was was true. And that can also be the other way. If we get an abnormal result that we really weren't expecting and we can't explain with anything your pet's doing, then actually repeating that test because it might have been a false result that we got. No test is 100% perfect. And that's the same with, with lab tests um, as well as physical exams and everything else. So yeah, going back to the beginning of making sure nothing's been overlooked and nothing's been skipped. So with that in mind, the very first thing to determine with a cat who is peeing everywhere, is peeing outside the litter box, is to determine if it is peeing while assuming a normal position. Is your cat kind of squatting normally, but it's just doing it outside the litter box? Or are they spraying on a vertical surface or on a wall, on the side of your sofa, um, on the leg of your bed or something like that? Um, and the reason this is important because the former, so the normal squatting, toileting position, suggests there could well be something more medical underlying something else going on that's of a medical nature while spraying on vertical surfaces really is normally going to be due to stress or territorial marking you know in leo's case he's a 12 year old cat so territorial marking is actually pretty unusual in an older cat if he's been neutered now if he's actually not been neutered then that's definitely going to make all the difference or it's definitely i guess i don't like to deal in definites but it's more than likely to make a huge difference if he is actually territorial marking and he's entire so once that kind of is out of the way and we've determined which one it is and which way maybe where the problem's more likely to be, the next thing we want to do though is come is kind of work through the most common medical problem. So uh, we already know that Leo has arthritis, so could that be treated more effectively? Are the litter trays easy to access? So uh, do they are they very large? So it's easy to kind of stand in and move around in, and do they have a shallow lip? So it's easy to get into. It doesn't involve kind of picking um, Leo having to pick his legs up. Uh, really high or kind of catch his legs as he's trying to get into the litter tray which is hurting him and so he's choosing actually just not to go in for that reason you can also get ramp access as well just to really make it easy for your cat to get into their litter tray to use and of course make sure it's in an easy position there's no point having a large shallow lipped litter tray if it's on the top of a work surface or something like that that your cat can't actually jump up into or it really hurts to get there so they choose not to so the other common medical problems we want to uh, rule out other forms of bladder disease so that's infections uh, stones certain types of cancer as well as idiopathic cystitis so that's going to involve taking um, urine samples uh, to look at that uh, under the microscope uh, maybe do, run a culture and sensitivity at the lab as well along with x-rays as well as ultrasound examination as well so once all of that's done and dusted and, and there's no concerns there the next thing we think is, are there diseases that are causing an increased urine production? Now, if the urine is really concentrated when it's been tested and it's just been tested in the previous steps, then we don't need to worry about that. But if the urine is dilute, then that is a problem. That shouldn't be the case in a cat, in a normal cat anyway. Um, and so that would give us a suspicion that actually there is another problem going on that's causing an increased urine production. Uh, that's things like uh, kidney failure, hypothyroidism, diabetes. You know, there's quite a lot of different conditions that can cause that. And they need to be uh, ruled out or, or diagnosed with blood testing. And there's various different tests that need to be need to be run to rule everything, everything out um, in that regard. Now, if all of these checks show nothing is a concern, then really we can truly focus on the problem as being a behavioural one. There are several different anti-anxiety medications out there. So that ranges from Fellaway, which um, we've, which has already been tried. Um, Genan's already tried yeah, the Fellaway and anti-anxiety medication. But anti-anxiety medication, like I say, comes in many forms. So there are the dietary supplements, so the herbal supplements, if you like. So think that's things like uh, Carmex or Zilkine. And then there's the pharmaceuticals. So that would be things like um, clomipramine. Uh, and there's various different kind of uh, pharmaceutical drugs that you can talk to your vet about uh, to try and find the best one or the combination of drugs that makes the best difference. Now, tackling the environment by making sure that the house is secure is also important. So installing 
things like microchip cat flaps if there is a cat flap, um, trying to make it so that your cat can't see any other cats through the window because that they don't actually kind of appreciate that pane of glass as being a barrier. And so they'll feel threatened if they're seeing other cats in their garden, in their territory, even if there is a window in between where they are. Um, and ensuring that there's always escape routes and things like that to, to Leo's safe place, just to try and make him feel less threatened, make him feel relaxed and less need to mark his territory. Now, given everything that has already been tried in Leo's case of problem peeing, my final suggestion would actually be to see if there's a behavioural specialist that you could contact or maybe be referred to. Or the best thing to do would be to have a behavioural specialist actually visit you at your house because this is can be such an environmental problem and actually seeing the setup can really help make a few very targeted specific changes to your cat's environment so that they can feel happy, they can feel safe and they don't need don't feel the need to exhibit this behavior. Get your questions answered at callthevet.org. So there's a lot going on there. There's a lot that we can do to help cats that are appearing outside the litter tray that are peeing everywhere. But it does take a little bit of work. Now, other important things that I haven't touched on because uh, Genome was already kind of well up with that is making sure that you clean the urine up properly. And there's various other strategies that I talk about over on an article that I'll link in the show notes as well. So if you do have a cat with problem peeing, work your way through some of the suggestions that I've given in this episode, but head over to those show notes and you can get a few more tips and strategies to help put a stop to this behavior. So that's it for this episode. I hope that it's helped uh, and I hope it gives you a few really actionable steps that you can take to put a stop to this problem that is, remember, it's a problem for your cat. They're, they're doing this and they're not doing it out of spite. They're doing it because they're feeling stressed or they've got a medical condition. Now, before I go, just a reminder about the Our Pets Health Academy. Go over to ourpetshealthacademy.com so you can join that wait list and you can get early bird specials on the community that really will help you optimize your pet's health. But that's it from me. This is the Call the Vet podcast. I'm Dr. Alex. And until next time, take care. You've been listening to Call the Vet. Be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode of the show that answers all of your pet questions.